Hi friends, welcome to Crack Grade B. We are back with yet another important lecture on the current affairs series and this is the part one of the January current affairs. Let's begin with the important news article. RBI caps upper limit. Right? So, what is this news about? This, this news is about that the Reserve Bank of India has, you know, capped the offline payment transaction at rupees 200. What do we mean by offline? Offline means without internet. An offline payment means a transaction not requiring internet or telecommunication connectivity to take effect. Understood? So, let's read out the background. So, this is the background. The central bank had announced its intention of doing pilot test on transfer without internet in the developmental and regulatory statement on August 6, 2020. So it has been started from August 6, 2020. So after that, three pilots project was successfully conducted between September 2020 and June 2021. Okay. Following that, in the month of October, okay, uh, so this is 21, the central bank had indicated that it would come up with a framework for carrying out small value, small value, our digital payment in the offline mode across the country and now we have the notification from the reserve bank of india that the small value means rupees 200 right so let us read this further so what did reserve bank of india said it in the notification so the upper limit of an offline a payment will be rupees 200 the overall remit would be rupees 2000 on a payment instrument at any point in time until the balance in the account is replenished. Offline payment can be made using any channel or instrument like cards, ballot and mobile devices. Okay. So, what is offline payment? Let us understand. So, we have read this line in the last line. So, what's the other one? X. The offline mode of payment can be enabled only after obtaining specific consent of the customer. In the case of cards, such transaction can be allowed without the need to switch the contactless transaction channels. Okay, so this is the definition from the Reserve Bank of India about the offline payment. So, this is very important news article and in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of MCQ, the important points are here. Okay, when did RBI conducted the pilot program? How many pilot uh, program RBI conducted? It's three. In which uh, regulate developmental and regulatory exit, it's August 6, 2020. To, uh, then in October 21, the central bank came up with the, you know, uh, indicated that it would come up. And now we have the, so what's the uh, overall limit? It's 2000. And what's the uh, upper limit? Upper cap, it's rupees 200. Like, right, uh, 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 like in case of UPI, the upper limit is set to rupees 1 lakh for a day. So you can do n number of transaction until rupees 1 lakh or until you have exhausted your balance. Let's say you have only 50,000 in your account. So you can't do 1 lakh rupees transaction. So you, let's say you are sending money, okay, uh, 10 times of rupees 5,000 each. So at the 10th time, your or, or sorry, at the 11th time, your transaction will be declined because you have exhausted the balance of your account. But what if you have more than 1 lakh rupees? So, you will be allowed 20 times. So, in 21st time, you will be debarred from doing the transaction. It will say that you have exhausted the limit for the day, that is rupees 1 lakh. Okay. So, this is how it will work. Now, let's move to the next news article, that is Airtel Payment Bank. So, in the last week, uh, uh, in the January, uh, sorry, in the month of December, second half, you have heard the same news regarding Paytm payment and this is again the same kind of news that we have heard for the Airtel Payment Bank. So what's the issue? Issue is Airtel Payment Bank gets permission to function as a scheduled bank from the RBI. Right? Under which section? Or what is scheduled bank? Scheduled bank refer to those banks which have included in the second schedule of the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. Okay, and any recent news? The recent news is Paytm Payment Bank was included into the same schedule bank in the month of December, sorry, 2021. Okay, Airtel Bank has been categorized as the schedule bank by the Reserve Bank. With this, 
Now what will happen? When a payment banks become a scheduled bank, so it's like this. Now pitch for the government issued request for proposal, primary options and undertake both central and state government business beside participating in the government operated welfare scheme. Right? So this would be the difference uh, that that will take place in the Airtel payment bank. Right? So let's move forward for, further with bank write-off. This is another news article regarding bank write-off. So what's the issue? Issue is public sector bank write-off will be 7 trillion in 5 years, which is double the government capital infusion since 2020. So this is a very grave concern because you see from 2024, whatever amount that government has infused in the public sector bank, to you know restructure them or to give them a financial strength bank has written off double the amount and that is equal to somewhere around 7 trillion rupees so this is huge amount but what is a write-off we have to understand the technicalities of write-off so if you are from the economics or from the accountancy background you already know what is a write-off say a write-off a write-off refers to a business accounting expenses reported to account for unreserved payment or losses. So you can read this. I am explaining you what is write-off. Okay. Let's say, uh, let's say you have, uh, sorry, let's say a bank have lended out 100 rupees to you. Okay. So what is this for bank? It's asset. This is asset. So Till the time you pay your EMI on time, bank is making profit and bank have to give income tax. Bank have to give income tax means this profit is taxable. So what happens? You stop paying EMI. Okay. So here you paid, paid, paid. Now you are not paying the EMI. Okay. Now you are not paying the EMI. So, so the moment you stop paying the EMI, this is this again is an asset but this becomes non-performing asset so there are different you know parameters like sma1 sma2 sma3 so if you want the details of this you can go ahead and watch the lecture in our youtube channel okay we have a detailed lecture on this so now let us discuss this so let's this becomes npa okay so when this becomes npa bank rights of this amount means by doing this what happens bank is no longer liable to pay the income tax on it right so right off are a business expenses that reduces taxable income on the income statement got it so this is just the technicalities right off doesn't mean that uh, the bank is not going to get this amount in future bank is still trying you go still trying bank is still uh, you know you have a bank have multiple channels to get that amount right so this is the news all about then let's see more details about the write-off so as per the reserve bank of india the amount recovered in the last five years through various channels such as low Adalat, tech recovery tribunal surface act ibc was around 4.14 trillion so this is again and huge now Commercial bank in India has written of 9.54 trillion in the last five years. Okay, so out of which 7 trillion was alone by the public sector bank and the rest 2.54 trillion by all other banks. Okay, so the amount written off by the bank in the last five years is less than 5% of their asset as on March 31st, 2021. But looking at the percentage, that's very small. So out of 100 rupees, of asset they have just written off five rupees of their asset so that's you know that's a small then the scheduled commercial bank wrote off 2.08 trillion worth of notes okay 1.34 trillion by the straight run lenders the amount recovered so this is around uh, this is regarding 2021 okay 2021 financial year so this is something that you should read so we have put all the data so that you can take a screenshot if you want or you can pause and read it twice and thrice and you will get it. Okay. Let's move forward to the next new news article that is too big to fail. So I think you already know what is too big to fail. The Reserve Bank of India recently stated that the State Bank of India 
HDFC Bank and the ICICI Bank are the domestically systematic important banks or DSIBs or these are also known as too big to fail. Why? Because you know when this bank fails the kind of uh, uh, the kind of uh, size investment or the presence in the economy activity this bank have is humongous right and if they fail this will disrupt the entire financial system okay so even the government will not uh, government will not want this bank to fail okay. so that's why they are being classified separately as too big to fail so while well, private lenders ICIC and SDFC fall under bucket one SBI fall under bucket 3. Now what is bucket 1, bucket 3 will come to you. The current classification of the bank as DSIB important is based on the data collected from bank as on March 31st, 2021. So every year, so I think you already know this from a very long time because from a very long time, these three banks are being classified as DSIBs. But what you do not know is that every year Reserve Bank of India update the list. Okay. So there are two facts. One fact that these three banks are there in this category for a very long time is a fact and we all know. But the other fact which we all may not be knowing is that every year RBI update this data based on the financial statement of the uh, uh, financial statement of the year. Okay. So this is as per the March 31st, 2021. So in 2015, so let's go to background. In 2015 and 16, RBI has classified SBI and ICICI Bank and DSIBs respectively. Further based on data collected from the bank on March 31st, 2017, HDFC Bank was also classified as DSIB along SBI and ICICI. So SBI was the first bank in India, ICICI was the second, HDFC is the third bank to get this status. Essentially, systematically important banks are the one which are perceived to too big to fail such a perception create an exception of the government support for this bank at a time of distress. Okay, so we have already understood and discussed this. Let's move forward and let us understand few things. What are RBI guidelines on DSIB? Okay, so, so look, the RBI guidelines says based on the bucket in which a DSIB is placed, an additional common equity requirement has to be applied to it. In a case foreign bank having branch presence in India is a global systematically important bank. It has to maintain additional common equity tier 1 capital surcharge in India as applicable to X GSIB. So if a global bank, right, which is global SIB, systematically important bank, means if that bank fails, entire world's economy will be, you know, will feel the heat. Like in case of you remember Lehman Brothers. Okay, so again, if you don't know what is Lehman Brother, I'm talking about, we have a lecture of global financial crisis, which you can watch and understand everything. Proportionate to its RWA in India. Under bucket one, so this is about bucket one, bank requires 0.2% of additional common equity tier or capital one as a percentage of RWA. Under bucket three, bank requires 0.6% of additional common tier. Uh, common equity tier 1 capital as a percentage of RWA. Okay, so all the details and the background and the static part is clear. Let's move forward. SEBI notification of vault manager rules. Now, first let us understand what is vault manager. So, this is related to gold vault manager, right? Now, let us, what is the issue? SEBI notifies vault manager rules allows browse to set up gold exchange means the firms can set up the uh, gold exchange. Now let's get into the background. Presenting the budget for 2021-2020 Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has said that SEBI will be the regulator for gold exchange and warehousing development and regulatory authority will be strengthened to set up the commodity market ecosystem. Right. Now, what? Following this, the board of SEBI cleared a proposal in September for setting up a gold exchange, wherein the gold metal will be traded in the form of electric gold receipt. Important point to note. And the browse 
will help in uh, in having a transparent domestic spot price discovery mechanism right so this is the uh, notification in short then why this is important the gold exchange encompassing the entire ecosystem of trading of egr and physical delivery of gold is expected to create a vibrant gold ecosystem in india the instrument simply it means that still in india you know gold goes unregulated you can buy gold without bill right but yes if the gold is small there is no harm in it but even uh, uh, even you know gold biscuits can be bought without bill so that is the nature of uh, uh, nature of you know irregularities in the gold market which sebi is trying to regulate with this notification will be notified as security the notification representing gold will be called electronic gold receipt and will be notified as securities this egr will ha will have a trading clearing and settlement feature akin to any other security right and also this is important because if uh, uh, like if you are holding the uh, physical gold if you want see why do people you know uh, people run towards gold because gold is seen as an asset which can you know settle up your future uh, problems or uh, that is how people look agar hum pareshani mein pade to ye bech ke hum hamare pareshani ko hal kar lenge this is how you know people in india thinks maybe people in the foreign as well thinks but so it is like a not uh, investment in not in the physical gold investment in electronic gold so again we can go ahead in the commodity market with mcx and buy the same but people uh, the regulators are trying to give people multiple option right there is sovereign gold gold bond a gold bond again again the same thing the government is trying to give multiple things to the people so what's the eligibility to set up this vault as per sebi the applicant shall be a body corporate incorporated in india and shall have a minimum net worth of 50 crores any person intending to carry on the business as a vault manager can make up an application to sebi for grant of a certificate of registration that's it let's move to the next article that is financial resolution and deposit insurance bill the frdi bill 2017 was meant to address the issue of insolvency of firms in the financials now what happened if a bank nvfc an insurance company a pension fund or a mutual fund run by a asset management company fails okay a quick solution is av av uh, available to either sell that firm merge it with another firm or close it down with the least disruption to the system and other stakeholders okay so this is the bill about then it is aimed to limit the fallout of the failure of institution like banks insurance company nvfcs pension fund and stock exchange because when even you see in the last uh, in the maybe month number in december when reliance capital failed okay, it had a very very uh, good amount of impact in the economy because even the government fund from the pf was uh, you know they have invested in capital reliance capital so this bill aims to you know uh, tackle the uh, uh, problem before it even you know becomes a uh, uh, bigger problem and disrupt the entire financial system the new bill will provide for an establishment a resolution authority which would have power to undertake prompt resolution for banks insurance company and systematically important financial firms then the legislation will also provide for an insurance of up to rupees 5 lakh for bank depositors which already has a legal backing got it now let's move forward and we have come to the end of the part 1 of the lecture let's meet in part 2 we wish you very good luck from team credit b thank you and happy learning